Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In this video, we will discuss some magnetic circuit examples and we will try to understand the magnetic circuits through examples. So, a magnetic circuit is shown in front of you, it consists of the core and a winding is there in which the current I is injected and that establish a magnetic flux in this core structure. Let's suppose that that flux is phi and the cross sectional area of this core is this one that is 1.5 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter square when the flux will be passing through this area a flux density is over here that is flux per unit area and that is given to us that it, it is 0.5 tesla tesla is equal to weber per meter square so this information is given to us and the flux is going to move at the mean length over here that is indicated in this diagram and that is 0.25 meter so the cross sectional area is given mean length is given and this material has the relative permeability that is 50,000 that means it is 50,000 times more permeable than the air or the free space so relative permeability is very high of this material and the flux density in this area is 0.5 tesla so we are supposed to calculate first of all the reluctance so reluctance depends upon the length it is directly proportional to the length of the path and is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area so the reluctance is given by this expression that is length over mu a where mu is the permeability that is given as mu naught into mu r where mu naught is the permeability of the free space or the air and mu r is the relative permeability at how much time that material is more permeable than the free space or the air so that is 50,000 in this case it means this material is 50,000 times more permeable than the air so now writing this permeability in terms of mu naught into mu r this expression can be written like that and now just plug in the values the length is 0.25 meter this is the permeability of the air relative permeability and the cross sectional area so you will get the reluctance of this path of the flux and that is 2.652 into 10 raised to the power 3 ampere ton per Weber because the reluctance is the ratio of the MMF with the flux that is the magnetic Ohm's law so unit for F is um, ampere basically but it is multiplied with the tons so we usually use ampere ton to differentiate it from the current that's the unit of the MMF and uh, divided by Weber over here will give you the unit of the reluctance okay now what is the permeance permeance is exactly the opposite of the reluctance it is like the conductance in the electrical circuit the ability of the material to allow the magnetic flux to pass through it that is basically the permeance and the reluctance is the opposition offered to the flow of the flux so the permeance can be calculated by taking the inverse of the reluctance so one over this so this is the permeance and its unit will be exactly opposite of the reluctance now you can calculate the flux uh, in this area because um, uh, flux density is given to us that is this one 0.5 tesla and you know that the flux is given as the product of the magnetic field density and the cross sectional area so magnetic field density is 0.5 tesla and the area is 1.5 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 so the flux in this core structure will be 0.75 milliweber so this is the flux that is established in this structure now let us calculate that that if we want to establish the flux density of 0.5 tesla in this arm of the core when the cross sectional area is 1.5 into 10 raised to the power of minus 3 meter square how much current is required to be injected in this winding if it has 200 tons because this will establish the magnetomotive force and that according to the reluctance of the path will establish a certain flux so we have imposed a condition that that we need this magnetic field density for that how much current is required in this winding 
so now the mmf that is the product of the number of turns and the current is given by this expression and according to magnetic ohms law it is given by this expression that is f is equal to flux into reluctance like the electrical ohms law that is v is equal to ir so there is one to one relationship between the magnetic ohms law and the electrical ohms law the flux is analogous to the current resistance is analogous to the reluctance and voltage is analogous to the mmf okay so for the flux density of 0.5 tesla um, we have the flux over here as we calculated above that is 0.75 milliweber so this is 0.75 milliweber into the reluctance of the core that we calculated above that is 2.652 into 10 raised power 3 so you can work out what is the magnetomotive force over here that is 1.989 ampere tons that's the magnetomotive force okay we know that magnetomotive force is the product of the number of turns and the current also given as flux into the reluctance so now using this relation we can work out how much current is required to establish that flux so i is equal to f by n the magnetomotive force is calculated over here 1.989 and there are 200 tons so you will have to inject the current of 9.945 milliampere in this winding which has 200 tons that will establish the flux density uh, that will establish the mmf of 1.989 and will establish a flux which will give you the flux density of 0.5 tesla in this core structure Okay, now what happens if we change the current? Let's suppose that the current is changed to 1.5 ampere. Of course, the magnetomotive force over here will change and the new magnetomotive force will be 500 into 1.5 because the new current is 1.5 that is 750 ampere tons. Now the flux that will be established in this core structure because of this MMF will be changed. How to get that flux? That is equal to F over reluctance. So 750 is the if 750 ampere ton is the mmf and the reluctance we have calculated above for this core structure so you can find out the new flux that will be there when you will be changing this current to 1.5 ampere so when you increase the current the flux is significantly increased that you can observe over here it is now 282.805 milliweber and if now you work out the magnetic field density over here that is flux per unit area so you know about the flux you know about the area cross sectional area that is given to you so you can find out the magnetic field density that is 188.537 tesla now so once you increase the current the magnetic field density will increase over here in the core structure okay so our next example is related to the calculation of the inductance of the winding it is the same structure as we are discussing but we have introduced now uh, an air gap over here that you can observe the width of the air gap is 0.25 mm so what will be the inductance of this winding if it has 500 tons so inductance of the winding is calculated with the help of this expression that is equal to the square of the number of tons divided by the total reluctance of the flux path now if you observe the flux path over here it has the core and it will have to pass through this air gap as well the permeability of this material that is mu naught into mu r and the permeability of the free space or the air that is over here is only mu so you will have to calculate the reluctance of this core and then the reluctance of this air gap separately because of the difference of the permeability okay now the inductance will be equal to n square divided by the total reluctance which is the sum of the core and the air reluctance usually the permeability of the core is very high permeability of the core is very high as compared to the permeability of the air so the reluctance of the core is very small as compared to the reluctance of the air so if we neglect this one that this is very very small so let's consider it zero so you can calculate the reluctance of the coil uh, sorry reluctance of this uh, path that is that will be considered as the air gap reluctance and using that you can find out the inductance simply n square by the reluctance of the air 
Okay, now we know that the expression for the air is Lg divided by mu naught into A. This G is representing the air gap. Length of the air gap, permeability of the air gap, air and the cross-sectional area of the air. So we have 500 tons, so 500 squared divided by the length of this air gap is 0.25 mm, so 0.25 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter divided by this 4 pi into 10 raised to the power 7, that is the permeability of the free space and the cross-sectional area that will be considered the same as that of this core. The core cross-sectional area is equal to the cross-sectional area of the air, neglecting the fringing effect. If there is the spreading of the magnetic field lines, so mm, the cross-sectional area of the air gap will be slightly larger, but we are neglecting those fringing. So cross-sectional area of the air is considered equal to the core, so that is considered over here. So this winding will be having the inductance of 0 0.565 Henry across, this, um, across these terminals. So the reluctance plays a very important role in the inductance of the winding. You can see a small air gap introduced over here, but its reluctance is very large as compared to the reluctance of the core. So it is significantly affecting the inductance that is seen across this winding. Okay, now our next example is also related to the calculation of the inductance. In this what we have done, we have changed the um, length or the dimensions of this air gap. Now it is 0.35 mm. In the last example we introduced the air gap of 0.25 mm. Now we are introducing the uh, air gap of 0.35 mm in the core structure. right? And the cross-sectional area is also changed, that is 12 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 meter square. And the permeability of the material is now 65,000. And we are injecting the current of 0.25 ampere in this winding which has 300 tons. So what will be the inductance across these terminals? How much inductance will be seen over here? What will be the inductance of the winding? That is to be calculated. Now first of all, let's calculate the magnetomotive force. That is the product of the number of turns and the current. Information is given to us, so we can calculate and that is equal to 75 ampere ton. Okay, now let's calculate the reluctance of this, reluctance of the core structure. Okay, so the reluctance of the core structure can be calculated if you know about the length of this one. So mean core length is given to us, that is 0.4 meters, so the length from here at the central part of this core structure is 0.5 meter. So the length divided by the permeability of the core into the cross sectional area of the core. So what is the permeability of the core? That will be equal to mu naught into mu r. So this is mu naught, this one is mu r and here is the cross sectional area and this one is the length. So plugging in the values you can work out the reluctance of the core and that is in this case is 4.081 into 10 raised to the power 3 ampere ton per Weber. Okay, next thing is to calculate the reluctance of this air gap, this one. So for that we need the length of that one, the length is 0.35 mm. So length divided by mu naught ag, now this is the permeability of the free space only. So 0.35 that is the length, permeability of the free space and then the cross sectional area Simplifying you will get the reluctance of this air gap and that you can compare with this one. It is very high. It is very high. Although the length of this material is quite large, 0.4 meter and the length of this is very small, that is 0.35 mm. But if you compare the reluctance because of this permeability, the permeability of the air is very small. So because of that, the reluctance is very high of the air gap. Okay, so now what will be the flux? The flux will be calculated as the ratio of the MMF with the mm, reluctance, the total reluctance, right? So the ratio of these two from the magnetic Ohm's law. So MMF that we calculated over here is 75 and the total reluctance that is um, to be seen by this flux that is established by this uh, winding because of the flow of the current. So this is going to flow through the reluctance of the core and then the reluctance of the air gap. They, are, they will be considered in series. So you will have to take the sum of this reluctance and the air gap reluctance. So taking sum, 
so um, that is the series combination so you will find out that the flux is 0.317 milliweber in this core structure the flux that will be in the core the same will be there in the air gap because it will have to pass through that one okay so after calculation of the um, flux in the core or in the air gap now we can work out the magnetic field density that will be there and the magnetic field density in the core or in the air gap will be same because same flux is going to pass and the cross sectional area is same so the flux divided by the cross sectional area so magnetic field that will be established in this core structure is 0.264 tesla right okay now we can calculate the inductance inductance is given as n square by the total reluctance of the path of the flux so 300 tons are there so 300 square and the total reluctance that we calculated over here that is um, mm, sorry this is the reluctance of the air gap and this is the reluctance of the core so some of these two will be the total reluctance of the path of the flux so you will have to add them together as you can see over here and the inductance that appears across the winding that is 0 0.381 henry right so that is the inductance of this winding so the reluctance plays a very important role in the calculation of the inductance you can design the material you can adjust the dimensions to get the required inductance of the winding so the material plays a very important role and the air gap normally the materials are taken and this air gap over here is adjusted to adjust the in, uh, inductance according to the required value if you want to change the inductance over here you will you can change you can play with this air gap to adjust the inductance and this is very commonly used in the power electronic converter circuits where we are supposed to adjust the inductances as per our calculation so over there we select a material we introduce air gaps to adjust the inductance that will be there for this winding so if i summarize this uh, video what we have discussed we have basically discussed how we can calculate the inductance of a winding based upon the dimensions of the core structure and the information of the magnetic circuit and we have seen that how we can calculate the basic parameters in the magnetic circuits so that's all from this video Thank you very much.